but I'm predominantly the whole game and just showcase what we've been knowing all along, what type of defense we're capable of putting on, producing on the field, night in, night out. It's an honor to welcome Ja'Garrett Davis back onto the 11th Island. Ja'Garrett, how are you doing today? Uh, man, I'm blessed, man. How are you fellas doing? Thank you all for having me back on the show. Thanks, man. We really appreciate you coming back. It's great to see you guys. We'll start off, first question. Last night, you guys beat the Stampeders. How important was this game to make a statement to get back to 500 on the year? It was um, a, a very big game, not only for us, but um, just to show everybody that we're still here. We're still a relevant team, and we still have a lot to prove. In the upcoming weeks, so I'm leading up into the breakup. So just to come out here and beat an opponent like uh, Calgary Stampeders when they have Bo Levi quarterback, I mean, it meant a lot. Yeah, you're facing a great quarterback in Bo Levi Mitchell, and your defense was still able to control the majority of the game. How'd that feel? It felt good. I mean, to know that we was able to really come out and just show dominance, and I'm predominantly the whole game and just showcase what we've been knowing all along, what type of defense we're capable of putting on, producing on the field, night in, night out. Mm-hmm. For, your, for yourself, you're facing a team that you won a great cup with. You had a fantastic game getting a sack, pass batted down against Bo Levi, your former teammate. So how did that feel? It felt good. I mean, it's always – it's like my it's like a family to me. So just being able to compete with those guys again and have, have a friendly battle and, just to have that one up at the end of the day, like I, I got, I, I won, I got y'all. It felt good. Mm-hmm. When you sacked Bo Levi, did, did you guys say anything to each other? Um, he just, he knew. Yeah, I, <laughs> he laughed like damn, but uh, it was good. I mean, the momentum, there, the big top swing in the tide, the momentum of the game, and I just really just shifted the favor, the momentum in our favor. Very good. Now heading into Week Eight, you're playing the Ottawa Red Blacks, a team that's been struggling as of late. A lot of people are tr- looking past the Red Blacks, but how important is it to stay on task? Oh, man, it's very important, especially for us since we're coming off a short week. I mean, it's a quick turnaround. We play them on Wednesday, which is like a quick Friday turnaround. So it's just even more focus that has to be put in to be ready for this, for this game. For the simple fact of you never know. Like one, one bad play, like even though they're struggling, they're still a professional team. They're still – going out here, and, and, they, and plus they're coming out for bye week, so they're going to be very prepared for this game. Mm-hmm. And right now there's a three-team race for the East. All you guys are either tied or within a game of each other. So what does Hamilton need to do to make sure they finish the division in first? Um, we just got to continue to play our, our style of um, football. Um, you know, we got we still got a lot of guys out, a lot of um, – hopefully we should be getting some key players back soon. Uh, you know, we got safety daily out. I mean, we still – a couple, maybe a game or two away from getting um, Brandon Banks back. We're about to get um, the real posy back. Um, Chris Banks out on the offensive line. We're about to get um, Braylon, Braylon Addison back. Um, a quarterback situation. We don't know how this is going to turn out, but we know it's going to work out, work out, work out in our favor. However, they play that. So we're looking strong. We're very confident that we're going to pull it out together. Now, speak to the rivalry between Hamilton and Toronto as this race heats up? Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, as everybody knows, it's the battle of the QEW. Uh, the battle. So knowing, you know what I'm saying, that's going to be a team we're going to be competing with to low-key and try to win, hold down the division. But we also can't forget about Montreal over there. It's going to be interesting just to know because, I mean, they hold a lot of cards in play. So we also got to see them two more times this year. So it's going to really dictate the fate of our season. Does that really bring an extra intensity to the rivalry when you play each other four times and you're tied 1-1 going into the next game? Oh, most definitely. It definitely um, raises the stakes a, a little bit, just knowing, like, okay, we got one, they got one. And knowing it's going to really come down to the wire over the next two two matches we have into because it's a possibility we might even see them in the playoffs as well. So, I mean, we might see them actually five times total. So, knowing that you want to – Winning those mental battles is, you know what I'm saying, having that one-up over a team, knowing that the mental paralysis is it. We, man, we just can't get over the hump of these guys. So we should definitely try to impose our will on them every time we get a chance. And how has it been having a homestand finally after such a long road trip to start the season off? I mean, it's a blessing being able to play back at home in front of our fans after being 
but no doubt the first four part of our season was on the road. So being able to come home means a lot. A lot of guys, you know what I'm saying, their routines, you get back to their normal routine of, you know what I'm saying, taking care of your body, sleeping in your own bed the night before a game. Like, you know what I'm saying, a lot, all those things makes, makes a big difference. So it helps a lot. How nice was it to see people repping the champ 56 gear in the home stands too? <laughs> Oh uh, man, it, it felt good looking at looking at the stands. Some people had on some of my memorabilia, shirts, hoodies. Um, I know a couple of people actually had on a couple of pair of my shoes too. So it felt good. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot going on with the Champ 56 brand right now. What are you most excited about? Um, I'm most excited about just continuing to spread the word, getting it out there to everybody. Not on let people know it's not only just based towards the adults, but it's also for kids and both. The women as well. Like I, we just dropped um, my second my second shoe design. I'm happy about that. It's more of an athletic casual shoe, everyday shoe. Just a workout out of here. Um, the colorway is perfect. There's a lot of um, any colors you can mix and match with it. So I'm just thankful for it, honestly, just to know that even through a pandemic and come I mean, still going through a pandemic, that we're still able to push it forward and continue to grow it and excel it. Yeah, talk talk to some of the challenges of running a business during the pandemic. Um, it was hard. Um, it was like it was definitely a, a very slow start at first. For the simple fact of, I mean, for me being a, a professional football player, like I really needed to be on the field to continue to branch branch out, get my name out there, and push the brand. But having that year off really created challenges. Cause like I said, we um we had a lot of things that we wanted to do and like a lot more colorways and a lot more designs and that we wanted to establish and put out there but we had to really like really construct it and change it and revamp a lot of things just to confine within what we was able to, to put out and what kind of skills and practices from playing professional football translate into running a business um they really they definitely coexist with one another because like we really have to Build a report, you know, it's uh, every day you got to get up and put the work in. It's not no, oh, it's just going to happen. Like, you have to be focused. You have to be dedicated to it. You got to make the necessary sacrifices to be able to, like I said, perform on the football field and to perform in your business, regardless of what it is. So it's definitely, for me, it goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Now, to get back on the field with the Tiger Cats, um, entering the season, there was a lot of hype and a lot of pressure, people picking the Tiger Cats to go all the way, win the Great Cup. How did some of the, some of those predictions play into the first few weeks of play and some of the pressure that you guys were feeling? Um, was it pressure? Yes, at least a, it's a subconscious pressure for the Super Bowl. Yes, you, you don't you don't hear everybody saying you don't hear people telling us like, oh, y'all pick. We think y'all gonna be one of the favorites to go to the Great Cup again to win the Great Cup. So for us, it was just you know what I'm saying, just getting back. To, uh, ground roots and coming off of a year and a half hiatus of not playing like with that added pressure so we got off to a very slow slow start but eventually I'm saying we was able to get it together. Mm -hmm. Now this year's been much different logistically than you have, would have ever had in your professional career. What's it been like adjusting these code rules yourself, your teammates as well? Say that again, I'm sorry. This year's been very different with all the different COVID rules. What's it been like for yourself getting used to these rules and well as your teammates and everybody on the team? I mean, it's been a, a big adjustment, honestly. Um, just being able to really adjust on the fly for some like, uh, like every week we, we have mandatory COVID tests at least two or three times a week. That's one. Two, um, just having like we can't really meet all together like as a group like we usually do. So, you know what I'm saying? Just being able to we on Zoom meetings like this all the time just to communicate with guys, just to get everybody on the same page. So just being able to overcome those challenges is what's really helping us, you know what I'm saying, be a better team overall. Like mm -hmm. you had to put in more focus, more dedication just to get to that, to that point. Mm -hmm. Now, a few weeks back when the COVID situation with the Edmonton Elks happened, uh, you were your team obviously was not involved, but as a player invested in the CFL, what was going on in your head? <laughs> Um, honestly, it was just, it was one of those things where I really had to watch it and wait, let it play out. I mean, I had to continue to be a professional and, like, you know what I'm saying, prepare 
and like everything was going to go on, but at the same time, in my back of my mind, I had to have the realistic goal of well, if it doesn't happen again, what's next? So luckily, like everything, the cards played out as they made, and it was able to get back to it. But it was, and I'll say it was a a slippery slope at one point. Like you didn't know it till like the last minute that okay, we actually going to have a season. We actually going to go back to get back to some some big, some form of normalcy. So I was happy about that. Mm-hmm. Like speaking of what's next, has the league came out with any extra protocols or what might happen if another outbreak in the league happens? Um, as of right now, they've really been sticking to the ground basis of what they what they decided at the beginning of the year. Only thing that's been this potentially going to be the new adjustment is unvaccinated guys won't be might not be able to travel because of the mandate is coming down over Ontario, mm-hmm. so you won't be able to fly through air or through over the train. So that might they no take that one might that will affect uh, some teams like you know what I'm saying. So a lot not every team is fully vaccinated, so you might have some key players who might not be able to travel because they to away games for for those games because of I'm being unvaccinated. Okay. And the last time we spoke, you touched on mental health with a real passion, speaking about your own as well as helping others with it. With it. So what are some things that you do during the season to keep your own mental health in a good spot? Uh, for me, um, I have a, a great – for me, I, I, I think it's a great balance of you knowing how to separate my business life and my personal life. So football is my job, my passion. I love it. But once I'm done for that day, like I really cut it off. Like once I get go home for that day, I don't think about football, look at football. Like my mind goes to based on focusing on me and my family for like that's where my happy place is. That's what keeps me locked in. That's what keeps me grounded. That's what keeps me level ahead to be able to go out here and do what I do good like day in and day out when I'm away from my family. Mm-hmm. Is that work life balance? Do you think that's something that a lot of young players just getting into professional football for the first time struggle with? Oh, most definitely. Um, it's really one of those things where most people don't, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not brought up, it's not talked about. So it's like you're throwing people into the fire. And so basically having a juggle, being a professional athlete, as well as dealing with their personal life, all the same. Because you look at athletes, you don't think, oh, they have personal issues. Like, but they are normal. People just like everybody has normal everyday, everyday struggles, issues that they deal with. That, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes that gets overlooked. So when you're an athlete, it's even worse because they expect you to be perfect all the time. You can't make no mistakes that you can't go out here and, you know what I'm saying, be a normal person when a lot of times that's all we really want to be at the end of the day is a normal person and treat it as, a, as such. Mm-hmm. Now, for your own personal experience as a player, what part of the weekly football grind requires the most mindfulness? Um, for me, it's just um, being attention to detail to the game plan that we like. Um, every team has a, a little nuance that separates the each team from the next. So just picking up on where I can gain a small advantage and small wins against my opponent and the mother. It's um, keys and reads on how the quarterback sets or if the, if the running back does certain things, whether he's running the ball or pass protected. Whether if um, the offensive lineman has a hitch in his in his lip, in his knee or on his step, so you know what I'm saying, kind of giving me a, a key to win my get off and I can kind of jump the snap. So it's just small things like that, like I really have to focus in on just a game that's that's like that. Mm-hmm. You talked about how important family is to you. How have you been able to stay connected with family that's might be still in the United States right now with all the travel restrictions? Um. It, Literally, I'm grateful for technology, for being able to FaceTime, Zoom calls, mm-hmm. stuff in that next day, or just picking up the phone. Like, it means a lot. So, like I said, I'm, I'm big on family. My family means everything to me. Yesterday was my daughter's birthday. So, been, not being able to be there for her, so, but still being able to call, talk to her, video, Skype, um, FaceTime with her, you know what I'm saying? This gave me pure joy like I was there. So, that was the best thing possible for me, but also being able to pick up the phone, talk to my mom, and get those pep talks from my dad and my brother, my sisters and my cousins. Like, it means a lot to me. That's really special. And as you know, we like to kind of wind down our interviews with some fun questions. So we got some new ones. So start off, what's your favorite restaurant to go to in Hamilton? In Hamilton? Oh, well, that's funny because I'm actually here as we speak. I'm at the, um, the Coop. There you go. That's I'm awesome. At the coop. And what do you usually order there? 
Ooh. Ooh. Second when I'm in, the, when I'm in the coop, I usually gotta get the um the Nashville chicken, or I gotta get their um their cheese and bacon burger. Mm-hmm. Does no it compare to anything off. back home? Ooh, their chicken sandwiches. Uh, I, I I I let their chicken sandwich compete with Chick Fil A. Really? Sandwiches. Yeah. It, get, it brings a different kick inside to the chicken sounds. I like it. Mm-hmm. That's a big endorsement right there. And next question, what CFL team has the most annoying fan base? Most annoying fan base? Oh, that's a great question. Because I would definitely have to go between Sags and Winnipeg. Okay. They fans going fans to talk noise regardless if they up or down. They're going to be right there and they – and the stands are close enough to where you can hear everything. So for me, I just laugh at it. It's like it's it's pretty enjoyment to me because I know I'm, I'm about to go out here and make a play and shut y'all up. So it's good. I like it. That's awesome. Which teammate of yours has stood out to you the most this year with how good they've been playing? Yeah, to be honest with you, I, it's not I can't even single out mm-hmm. one player because like at each level, is I can name at least two or three guys. Like and I and I if I go secondary, I gotta go. Brooks, <laughs> I gotta go see to here. I gotta go to Frank Williams. Uh, my boundary corner, he's going crazy right now. Yeah, I know he's not getting a lot of balls, but I'm telling you right now, what he's doing over there in that boundary is is some some scary in my opinion. But um, then like I said, linebacker, I got Simone Lawrence, I got Santos up front. You know, I got Big Ted, I got Dylan Wynn, I got Hauser waiting for um Martin to come back. We got a slew of young guys that's out there going crazy. Then you go to the offensive side of the ball. I mean, he, the numbers speak for itself. So he's just being able to with such a group of guys. It makes my job so much easier, to be honest with you. Yeah, they're a fun team on the field in, in Hamilton for sure. Now, finally, what is your favorite item in the Champ 56 shop and where can people find it? Oh, my favorite item in the Champ 56 shop right now would have to be. It might have to be either to be between the OGs because they're my first first shoe, and or the JG hoodie. But I'm big on hoodies. I like to keep me warm, so I'm big on the hoodies. But that's that's like my two go to um, items of my uh, my catalog. But to find it, I would definitely. Say go to www.champ56.com and go to the click on the link. You can go through our browse through our whole catalog for from kids to women, you know, whatever you want. And like I said, we got so much more in style. We just dropped our weekly um, catalog, so that's going that's about to go crazy right now. Along with our my new um <clears throat> shoe design, like I said, the, the Hamilton collection is still going up. It's going to continue to go crazy along with. I see it continues to go, and I, like I said, you still got the the OG catalog, so it's going up, man. I, I'm thankful, I'm happy, like I'm proud of my cousin being like my business partner, helping with everything, and just holding things down on 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 the forefront and back end while I'm up here taking care of business on the football field. And we'll make sure to put the link in the description for for all your stuff there. So thank you so much for coming on again. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thanks for then. Thank you for stopping after last week's game to meet with us, take a picture with us. Probably the most special moment we've had on the show to date. We look forward to watching you for the rest of the year and uh, hope to talk to you again soon, maybe before the Great Cup. Oh, most definitely, man. We definitely want to make, make this happen again. Definitely before the Great Cup or Great Cup, we're we going to be there. So I'm going to make sure I'm going y'all the exclusive. So I'll be a run down, play by play. So when, when the Great Cup comes, I just know I'm coming to y'all for, the, for my exclusive. Awesome, man. Thank you Look so much. Look forward man. to it. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all again as always. Have a good one.